Sheepwoofing challenges come in all shapes and sizes, from the wild sheep grand slams of the USA to the traditional Scottish McNab. But there is nothing stopping people with shooting and fishing opportunities offering all kinds of colourful ways to deliver the goods under pressure. We're going to get around the panic. Pipeman's here. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. This morning, Roy is embarking on a new challenge dreamt up by Keith Gorsuch and Gavin lockhart Myrams of Glorious Game. They run shoots and offer stalking in Hampshire, so they very reasonably asked themselves why not join up the dots and deliver a neat sporting package that says Hampshire loud and clear. That's the theory. Next, they need a friendly guinea pig or crash test dummy to put it into practice. As you can see behind me, the harvest moon is just disappearing as the sun is coming up. We kicked off this morning at uh, quarter to four. We've made our way down to Hampshire because we've been challenged to do a Hampshire McNabb. So we're going to be going for a brown trout um, and hopefully maybe a grayling as well. But we're starting off this morning to try and find a roebuck. We're then going to be moving on and hopefully be shooting um, a brace of partridge. And if we don't manage a buck this morning, it just gives us enough time, hopefully before dark, to come back and do a buck. So that's where we are. The, uh, the gauntlet has been uh, thrown to the floor. The challenge has been set and we'll see if we can complete it. The row should be straightforward. Yeah. He's a bit rusty, but it's pretty good with a shotgun. But could fishing be the weakest link? <laughs> with this boy's misspent youth, it's doubtful. The row are on the fields, but not a suitable buck. I think the wind just swirled on us there and they shifted. Roy says the wind was wrong, but David wonders how he could make such a mistake with a big orange windsock in sight. I have noticed a very large windsock, but what's going on over there isn't what's going on over here. Thank you, David. The bit that I thought was going to go quite simply just isn't yet. Oh dear, our row time has run out. Roy now needs to join a shooting party for one of their drives. He hopes to bag a brace of partridge. Seven. I've done I've done very little uh, shooting at all this year, so any any help will be very useful. Right. Right. Stick it in front of the bird, pull the trigger, <laughs> keep it out. Thank you, mate. <laughs> We've joined a, a group of guns now, and uh, we're tucking in with them on the estate for part of the partridge shooting. We've got some lovely topography here, so hopefully it will show some very, very good birds. It's mainly partridge. Um, obviously, we're now into the beginning of the pheasant season, so if there are a few decent pheasants, then we may pick one as well. But uh, as I say, it's, um, if we get some presentation off these hills, it should be absolutely phenomenal shooting. There we go. Thank you, sir. Very much. Thank you very much. No, it was superb sport. Thank you for that. We've completed the partridge side of it anyway now, so uh, that's good. First one down, and now hopefully we shall go and find ourselves possibly a, a, a brown trout and hopefully grayling. I've never caught a grayling before, so that would be a, a, an extra bonus as well. Roy shoots well and gets three brace. He's still in the running, but needs to head to the River Compton to meet our guide who will try his best to get Roy his brownie. Instead of uh, what the main people do is come up to the river and try and cast straight across and actually end up spooking half, half the, the fish. fish in there. Yeah. Exactly that. So, um, but that's good. So you're getting a bit of a handle on the rod. Excellent. A little bit softer on that forecast. A little bit softer on the that forecast. Again. A couple there. What's the fish limit on here? Not sure if it's Jake or Elwood that he yeah. reminds us of, but he is wearing dark glasses, has a full tank of gas, and he's on a mission. <laughs> His first take is a rainbow. OK, not the species that we're after, but a superb bit of fun to start with. So, obviously, a, a beautiful rainbow trout, um, and I've not fly fished for a long time, but it is just superb. While Roy casts, we find out more about the Hampshire McNabb in all its different guises depending on season. So what we wanted to do, David, is, is get people to put their phones down and get out into the countryside and with access to some really iconic Hampshire sporting estates, thought a roebuck, 
a trout um, and some partridge would be a great way to celebrate all the things that uh, Hampshire's got to offer. So you can adapt this, so even if it's outside the, the partridge and pheasant season, it could be pigeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We have we do some great pigeon shooting. Bar a couple of months of the year, we've got uh, estates where pigeon needs to be shot, so we'll put a pigeon in there and um, perhaps go for a brownie in the middle of the, middle of the season and look for a monty, perhaps. So you're right. So we want to be as flexible as possible, but make it nice and difficult. Uh, Roy has already missed out on the roadbook this morning, so yeah. we like the fact that it's up the ante. Yeah, well, good. Well, let's make it harder and harder. We'll come back next year and we'll make it even more difficult and uh, maybe he could do a roebuck and a monk track and uh, all three species of fish and, we'll, we'll, and a couple of pigeons. So uh, you just tell us what you need and we'll make it as hard as possible for Roy. <laughs> Thank you very much. After four hours, Roy has two rainbow to his name and we need to return to the row stalking. It's going to be tight. That's the end of the fishing stint. And uh, yeah, just thank you very much, gentlemen. That was absolutely superb. Just beautiful bit of water there. Really, really enjoyed that. But I was just oh, dreaming of a grayling. But there we go. Yeah, I, I'll certainly take you up on that one, most definitely. But uh, yeah, now we'll, uh, we'll head back and uh, see if we can find a buck to finish off the, uh, the challenge. Just standing watching these deer frolic, so there's I think there's seven or eight deer out there playing around now. There's a couple of buck kids out there that we've identified, but I really don't want to do that. I'm just gonna gamble with the last five or ten minutes of light and just hope. Uh, we'll see how we go. Roy decides to gamble and stay in an area where we saw a buck this morning. Took my time, man. Oh, again, the eleventh hour. <laughs> Gee whiz. Oh man, my heart is going. I didn't think we were going to get up on him then. With the hill and the height of the bipod there, I just couldn't get over the top of the stubble, so I had to crawl and crawl and crawl. And we got into 190 meters there, um, and uh, luckily he just presented a beautiful shot. Again, the light is fading on us, but we actually managed it. I don't believe we finally did it. I really, I got to that stage where I was just thinking that it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, and then away we went. So, yeah, phenomenal. Um, uh, yeah, that was just a, such a brilliant challenge. Super fun. I mean, you, you, yeah. Oh, man, that really got my heart going on that one. That's, it's been a long time since uh, one buck has meant so much. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that, mate. That was Success. super. Brilliant. Uh, that was absolutely phenomenal. Last light as well. I know. We were just, just on it. Brilliant. Thank you, mate. Keith and Gavin congratulate Roy on his red leg, rod and row combo. He's completed the challenge if we accept a rainbow instead of a brownie. It's a great effort and excellent sport. For more information about stalking, fishing and driven shoots in Hampshire with Keith and Gavin, visit gloriousgame.com. Well done, Roy. Brilliant.